My name is Sebastian Bay, and I'm a researcher with the Swedish Defense Research Agency, specializing in election security and digital harms. This year, the DEF CON Voting Village is focused on the spread of election related disinformation and misinformation. And I'm going to give a short talk introducing some of my research and highlighting the need for increased cybersecurity for social media companies as part of our combined efforts to strengthen election security. There are, of course, several aspects of election security. And traditionally, we have focused on the conduct of elections when we talk about cybersecurity. That means safeguarding the IT systems needed to administer elections, from registering voters to counting and tallying the results. This is clear, and this is also something that is needed. We've seen continuous efforts to try to undermine uh, election uh, systems uh, using IT attacks of different sorts. However, recently we've also seen that digital disinformation is an equal or perhaps even larger threat to the conduct of elections, where digital disinformation is used to try to undermine trust in the election process, it is used to try to undermine the will and the ability of people to participate in the elections. And it is, of course, used in an attempt to thwart or undermine the political process, often with the illegitimate use of influence in different forms. But I will argue today that much or a huge part of this problem is also a cybersecurity problem, but a cybersecurity problem primarily for social media companies. Now, if we simplify enough, this information can be um, divided into two separate issues, the issue of content and the issue of inauthentic behavior. Now, content can be disinformation. It can be illegal and it can be many other things. And we've seen during the last few years that regulating and moderating content is difficult even if we're now seeing better policies in regard to election related content on social media platforms. But if content is tricky to develop clear policies for, inauthentic behavior and other forms of social media manipulation is far less tricky. It is simply not allowed on all the major uh, platforms I've studied. You are simply not allowed to run thousands of fake accounts on any of the large platforms. You're not allowed to manipulate their algorithms. You are not allowed to scrape their content. You are not allowed to hack their systems. Yet, we see that this is a large problem. It is a large industry. And of course, this is something that is being done all the time. This is what a bot farm can look like in real life. These pictures are provided by the Ukrainian security services showing what they argue is a Russian sponsored bot farm inside of Ukraine to try to avoid detection. What we're seeing is SIM card. It is uh, various forms of uh, antennas used to run, um, uh, used to run uh, different forms of proxies. And of course, um, to set up and avoid detection. Now, the European Union has long underscored a need for social media companies to intensify and demonstrate the effectiveness of efforts to close fake accounts. This has been in the code of practice to address the spread of disinformation, also within an election related context. The social media companies have been asked by the European Commission to uh, conduct regular reporting to the commission where they report on the number of fake accounts that have been closed during the last quarter and during the last year. And we've seen in this reporting that fake accounts continue to be a huge problem measured in the billions. And it is a large problem because fake engagement trigger algorithms to spread content to authentic users. Fake engagement trick authentic users to believe that content is more popular than it really is. Fake engagement misleads users. Fake engagement manipulate democratic conversation. And fake engagement create loss of genuine advertisement spend. I've co-authored 
three reports on the topic of inauthentic behavior on social media, ranging from the black market to trying to develop metrics and methods for assessing the ability of social media companies to counter the abuse uh, of their platforms. In effect, trying to assess the level of cybersecurity in these platforms when it comes to preventing inauthentic behavior. If we start by looking into uh, um, the black market for social media manipulation, um, which I think is a good base for understanding the problem of social media manipulation, I'm going to give you three main takeaways here. The first is that the scale of the black market infrastructure is extensive. We see that an entire industry has developed not only around providing the manipulation services, but providing the infrastructure needed for the manipulation services uh, to work. And that ranges from uh, fake SIM cards, digital fingerprinting, scripts and capture services um, for um, the manipulation services to provide that is used to generate, provide, and maintain fake accounts. Um, we also see um, management platforms that are used by the um, inauthentic engagement uh, services, but they're also sold as software to, um, to independent contractors and to private companies that wish to run their own campaigns. Seeing this entire service, uh, we initially thought that this was a black market. And that is also why we labeled the report a black market for social media manipulation. But what we saw is that it's not actually a black market. It is an illegitimate market perhaps, but it's extremely easy to find. And the openness of this industry is still today quite striking. We see that the larger social media manipulation service providers, they fearlessly promote their services. Uh, they promote them on their own websites, of course, uh, but they also promote them um, on app stores, on, um, on the social media platforms uh, themselves. Uh, they usually run tutorial accounts on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, etc. And of course, uh, you can find them on all major searches. It is even so that they, uh, they use uh, ads on search engines to promote their services. Third, much of this infrastructure seems to be Russian. It doesn't mean that it's state-sponsored, but many of these um, primary service providers that are reselling their services to many of the companies offering manipulation services in the West uh, are Russian. And they seem to be Russian simply because this is a place where this industry has existed for a long time, and there is a lot of know-how in this area. But this is also a global industry. And we're seeing more and more of fragmentation, uh, where, for an example, uh, if you live in uh, Nigeria and you want to buy manipulation, you might go to a Nigerian provider. They might use Russian infrastructure, um, but they might also use infrastructure from Southeast Asia, et cetera. And we're seeing these companies in all parts of the world, even though uh, a lot of the um, services provided are being generated in Southeast Asia or Russia. We're seeing resellers and customer support and development in the West as well. So social media manipulation. We've tried to assess uh, to what extent social media companies are able to counter the manipulation of their services, how good they are, and how big of a difference it is between the individual companies. And we've done this in two consecutive reports in 2019 and 2020. And we're now in the process of setting up an experiment for 2021. And this, of course, um, is done to assess the ability of social media companies to combat inauthentic behavior on their platforms. In 2019, we ran an experiment where we bought engagement during two months on 105 different posts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. In 2019, we bought 54,000 fake engagement from these social media manipulation service providers. Um, 3,000 comments, more than 20,000 likes, and more than 20,000 views for 300 euros, the equivalent in dollars. 
and we ran reran this experiment during six weeks in October and November 2020 uh, in the context of the US election. And we then bought engagement on 39 different posts, uh, also including TikTok last year. We increased uh, the number of engagements bought. So we bought 335,000 engagement, still spending roughly 300 euros. After buying this fake engagements, we measured uh, how much of it got through, how much of it got blocked, and when ha what happened when we reported it to the social media companies. Our main takeaway was that social media companies overall were unable to block the inauthentic engagement bot. Four weeks after purchase, more than 98% of the bot engagement were still online. Four days after reporting a sample of the inauthentic accounts to the platforms, more than 98% of the uh, accounts reported were still active. Our uh, conclusion last year was that Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok are still failing to sufficiently combat inauthentic behavior on their platforms, enabling uh, the widespread disinformation, um, uh, dissemination of disinformation on their platforms. But we also looked at several of the parameters um, that are very useful for understanding the scope and scale uh, of this problem. For an example, we've tracked the cost of manipulating social media platforms from 2018 up until 2020 by uh, creating baskets uh, that uh, contain um, like, likes, comments, um, retweets, etc. And we've seen that a standardized basket uh, from 2018 to 2019 um, got cheaper. Uh, and then from 2019 to 2020, the prices in general leveled off. But we can also see here that there's a difference between the various social media platforms, that it differs between the companies, how the prices have changed. And why is the price interesting? Well, we believe the price is, is an indicator for how difficult it is to manipulate platforms. The stronger security the platforms have, the more difficult it will be to manipulate them, the more it will cost the manipulation service providers. And we're seeing that there isn't a fundamental change in the price, but we're also seeing that there's a difference between the platforms regarding how difficult they are to manipulate. We've also looked at the speed of delivery, that is how quick or how fast you can manipulate social media platforms. And um, if you take 2020, for an example, we could see that, for an example, TikTok um, last year um, was not sufficiently effective when it came to countering inauthentic bot behavior. Almost all of it were delivered instantaneously on TikTok. While, for example, some of the other platforms, uh, about half of the content were uh, delivered within 12 hours. And then it took, um, um, in many cases, several days before 100% of the bot engagement were delivered. And of course, the speed of delivery is an important indicator for how uh, effective the platforms are at countering abuse of their services. Another indicator is the ability of the platforms to remove fake accounts reported to them. And last year, when we tested this, um, several of the platforms didn't remove any of the reported accounts. The most effective platform, Facebook, uh, only removed 9% or 9 out of the 100 um, fake accounts that we reported to them. Overall, our takeaway from these experiments have been that there is a significant difference between the different social media platforms. The amount of money, the amount of resources, and the amount of human skill spent to directing at trying to combat platform manipulation makes a huge difference. And we can see that uh, when platforms make a concerted effort to try to change this, we also see that it becomes harder to manipulate the platforms. Facebook has made progress during the last year, for an example. They've become much better, even though we assess that um, Twitter is still the industry leader when it comes to countering abuse of their systems. Um, TikTok, which was a new platform last year, uh, scored um, least well, 
but we have reason to believe uh, that they have improved during this year, uh, spending more efforts, more resources on trying to improve themselves. Uh, it will be interesting to see during uh, the rerun of this experiment uh, this year, if this ranking stays, or if we can see that, um, uh, that some of these platforms, which we suspect have put more effort into combating this problem, also uh, show a significant improvement in our measurements. We have seen uh, another interesting takeaway that we've seen is that there can even be a significant difference between um, platforms owned by the same company. And the best example is the significant difference between Facebook and Instagram. Instagram is much more easy to manipulate than Facebook is. And this is surprising. Um, one would think that um, uh, two platforms owned by the same company would have equal levels of security. Uh, but this isn't the case at all. Um, uh, from creating fake accounts to buying fake engagement, there's a clear difference between these two platforms. And that illustrates that this is a technical problem to a large extent. Um, when we ran this experiment two years ago, we even saw on Instagram that uh, even when fake accounts uh, that had delivered fake engagements uh, were removed, the fake engagement remained, which of course is a technical issue with the platforms. So uh, to a large extent, combating manipulation of social media platforms is a technical problem um, that social media companies have to pour um, financial resources into solving. And that hasn't been done uh, enough before. Um, but we have seen from year to year, from 2019 to 2020, improvement. But as it was uh, at the end of last year when we ran this experiment, uh, the manipulation service providers were still winning by a large margin. That is, you could still effectively and cheaply buy manipulation and it would be speedily delivered onto social media platforms and it would remain up for weeks and weeks. Um, to this day, some of this uh, fake engagements that we bought already back in 2019 remain active online. So seeing this and studying the problem of um, disinformation and misinformation on social media. We understand that inauthentic behavior is a central component of coordinated inauthentic behavior. That is the coordinated spread of disinformation. And um, one important solution for tackling that is through enhanced cybersecurity for social media companies, protecting their platforms against technical abuse. So in that sense, social media cybersecurity equals election security, because we're seeing that the spread of disinformation, we're spread, seeing that, the, uh, that uh, intentional efforts to undermine the will and ability of voters to vote on election day, and we're seeing that the intentional manipulation of political conversations on social media platforms um, happen online, and some of it also happens using uh, bots and technical manipulation. Uh, and that can easily be prevented um, with additional cybersecurity for the social media companies. Um, during uh, last year's experiment, we developed a number of recommendations for platforms and for policymakers. Um, first of all, of course, that social media platforms need to do more to counter abuse of their services, but also that we need to set standards and require reporting from the companies based on more meaningful criteria. Today, it's very difficult to compare and contrast uh, reports from different social media companies. We also need to increase transparency and enable independent verification of figures reported by the social media companies. And in the same way, we need independent and well-resourced oversight. We also need to regulate the market for social media manipulation. We need to counter manipulation services to a much larger extent. We've seen some important steps being taken by social media companies suing manipulation service providers. And we've also seen a number of governments file charges. But still today, uh, most of these uh, core services remain online. Um, so more needs to be done. 
but we also need to understand that we need a whole of industry solution to combat this problem and from a cybersecurity standpoint if we take the case of the uh, ukrainian security services we could see that these bot farms they heavily rely on sim cards and other telecommunication equipment and that of course means that regulation of this uh, equipment of uh, sim cards remains a critical component in combating the misuse of social media platforms but we also need to, to make sure that social media companies spend more efforts uh, preventing the abuse of their services so cybersecurity remains and will continue to be for the coming years a very critical component when it comes to election security especially in the field of disinformation and misinformation thank you